Yo, what's up everybody? Hope everybody out there is having a great day. I know I'm having a great day, as I am every day. Um, no reason not to. Life is good. Um, today, what you guys have tuned into today to watch is the installation of a Razorback temp gauge. I personally don't think there's a better indicator in the market as far as gauging the temperatures of your belts while you're out running, whether it be the trails, the dunes, whatever it is you guys are into, you guys got to have a Razorback temp gauge. Razorback's the best out there. So I love their temp gauge. You guys have seen those um, on Austin's Turbo S, my Turbo S, which reminds me, I actually did a really, really awesome uh, Razorback temp gauge installation video on the Turbo S and uh, for some reason I never, never uploaded it. Maybe I'll do that uh, for all you guys, Turbo S guys out there. Uh, maybe I'll get that done. And it's uh, pretty in depth, you know. So, um, but that's what we're going to do today on the Pro XP. So, I don't want to get off track here, but literally, I got Razorback temp gauge right here on the table. We're going to open this thing up right now. Boom, there it is. Um, I went ahead and I went with the uh, silver bezel and uh, you got the switch here. So if you get the 3.1, you're gonna get a switch and basically that makes this display dimmable. So you can change the brightness of it. Um, at first, when I only had the original, you couldn't dim it, I didn't think it was that big a deal. Jeremy bought the 3.1 and I was like, yeah, that's cool. But uh, you know, I didn't think it was necessary. But after I put it in Sandy, man, I realized that dimmable option is really awesome. Right here off the rip, you get your gauge, you get your switch. And then underneath that, you're gonna find your wiring harness. So this is gonna be the harness that literally goes into the sensor that's gonna go into your clutches um, to you know gauge that belt temp and all that good stuff. Right here is going to be your other harness. It's basically gonna carry power um, to the unit, to the dimmer switch, all that good stuff. And there is another cable in here that you can open up. And uh, I believe that's for if you wanna put um, a fan or type deal in your clutches to help the cooling so pretty cool option there this here is the actual piece that's going to go in your clutch cover if you're dealing with the turbo s or in this instance we're actually going to go into the housing for the clutch so basically you're going to drill the hole inside there and then you're going to pinch this in here with these two two nuts on here and uh, i highly recommend using loctite and all that good stuff here you got some ends for some of your wires and stuff like that. It's cool that they throw that in there. As usual, gotta get your Razorback sticker. And then Razorback also includes incredible directions. So, I mean, pretty sweet. All color, all illustrated, pictures, the whole deal. So, there's really no reason why you guys can't get this thing installed. And it just gives you all the information about this thing. Um, which I think is awesome. All the tools needed to get the job done. But we're pretty familiar with it, so we don't need to go through that. We just need to get to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this clutch cover off and pretty much get to work on this thing. I will probably come back on here when it comes to getting the secondary off, show you guys how to do that, show you where I line up the hole, how I drill it, all that good stuff. Um, I will definitely show you that. So let me get this stuff off and we'll get to that point. So we got the clutch cover off of this bad boy. When we got the clutches exposed, um, when you get to this point, what you're going to want to do is get this secondary off. And uh, I would suggest getting an impact. If you don't have an impact, get one. If you can't get one, oh well, you can still do it. Grab a 10 millimeter socket, and you're going to want to freaking loosen that bolt up right there. Impact does make it a lot easier, but we've already cracked ours. And you're going to pull this bolt out. Now you're going to have three, four shims on there. Let's see how there's four on this one. So make sure keep these things intact. You do not want to lose those. So I just leave it like this. I'll set it down out of the way. Come back to it when we go to put this thing back on and make sure you got them all. Okay. That's all that was in there. No big deal. Now what you're going to want to do is pull this secondary off, get your belt off out of the way. And then we're going to go ahead and mark on the inside of the inner clutch cover where we're going to drill that hole and then we're going to drill a half inch hole in here right above the belt so let me get this secondary off and get right back all right secondary is off literally just pulled it off there, there's no trick to that didn't need to show you that it just slides right off take your belt off set the belt down there no big deal now i already knew where the belt was sitting when i freaking did this and uh literally i see some guys putting it here 
on some forums and whatnot. But in my opinion, it's off to the side just a little bit. Um, probably still getting a reading, but I think we can do a little bit better than that. And I'm literally, you see this, where it comes down and ends right there? I'm going to put that booger right there, right after that. Um, and it's a nice flat spot. I don't got to worry about any transitions in there. Everything's going to flit or uh, fit nice and tight, seal up really good. Um, it is close to this, but I'm not going to have to bend too much to get that wire out of the way. So it's not going to be under pressure too much. So no big deal. But I feel really good about putting it right there because it literally is dead center on that belt. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that. I'm going to drill it. I'm going to get my shop vac. And while I'm drilling it, I'm just going to catch any debris just so I don't have any loose metal floating around in my secondary after I'm done. Um, I would blow it out with air afterwards anyways, but I'm going to do that as just a, an extra precaution. You're going to want to use a taper bit. These things are amazing. And uh, just drill it nice, easy, and slow, and you'll have no issues going into this thing. You can see I already marked my hole right there, dead center to that piece right there. A little to the left I went just because it is offset just a little bit. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drill this thing in. Half inch hole. Don't freaking overdo it. Excuse the vacuum. All right, so you see how simple that is. Super nice, clean hole. Um, another thing, always check up top. Just make sure you're not hitting anything, uh, just in case you would be. Um, but I'm gonna grab the gauge, check it. I need to go one more step, but I am playing on the side of caution. I do not wanna screw this up because I do not wanna have to replace this clutch cover. So I'm taking my time. I'm making sure. And it shows right there, you know, I need to go up one more step, so. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, should be good. Just gonna double check just to be sure. I'm feeling pretty good about that. And that's, that's perfect. I mean, it's just snug. I, sure you guys can see that when you move my hand here I'll put the threads down on this just so you can see so I mean it's perfect and I can come through the top watch it as it comes down okay so see it dropped it down right there now what Razorback wants to see is like three threads showing so as long as you got your Loctite on there and you got this thing where you want to be and this is perfect I'm super excited about this so I'm gonna go ahead and take my nut thread that thing on now like I said they want to see about three threads right here showing you don't want to put too much in there so I got that where I want now I'm gonna pull it up and I'm gonna tighten the top nut down and I got thread tight up there so once I get this thing tight, she's not going to move ever. So that's how you do it. It's nice and easy. No big deal. And I will note, don't go down too far. Stay as close to this freaking line on this casting as you can. I mean, I could even went up a little bit more. This is about as low as you'll want to take it. So looks good super excited and this way since this is coming down and not on the side or or on the lower part of the uh, cover you're not going to get a bunch of dust collected inside the eye so you're going to get a really accurate reading that's why they recommend you being up on the higher side of the clutch cover so pretty cool i'm gonna go ahead and get that button down and probably put, well i'm gonna go ahead and put my clutches back together get my belt back on get the cover on and then I'll wire this thing back through the car. Um, I don't need to show you guys that. I mean, seriously, I'm going to come up right here's my wire. I'm going to come up, attach to this wiring here, follow it back nice and neat, zip tie it down. And then I'll come through the center channel. I am going to take 
Um, Amy's actually going and picking me up a bunch of this uh, wire conduit because I don't want to have any you know signal problems or anything like that. Um, a few of these things, a few of the wires I've been running, I've been wrapping in this conduit just to keep everything shielded and nice and neat. Somebody's here. But like I said, I'm going to go ahead and get that ran, get that in that conduit, and then I'll get the switch installed in the dash. I'll get the power installed, and then I'll show you how I'm going to mount this thing on the roll cage. So coming along, super excited. A few more projects on the back end, and then I can start buttoning this up. So um, pretty cool. All right, clutch covers on, belts on. We're going to go ahead and grab that bolt just the way we left it. And make sure all those shims are in there just as they're intended. Yep, look good. And then tighten this thing up. So you're going to tighten this down to 43 foot pounds. So make sure you do that. And then when you go put your cover back on, uh, these, if you just want to know, these are all 36 inch pounds. So you can tighten those down if you want. Uh, they were really tight when I went to take that off. Um, so make sure you do that, get that tight so that thing's sealed and awesome. So like I said, do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and do what I said I was going to do here. I know I keep cutting this video up. I'm so sorry. I know I told you I was getting ready to do this, but then it's like I get to a point and I'm like, man, I should probably show you guys this just to show you. Um, but I want to show you exactly where that eye lines up on that belt and why I chose this spot. So I'm not sure if you can see 100%, but I mean, if I put my fingernail on the edge here and come straight down, I'm right here on this edge of the belt. I mean, this thing is dead smack in the center of that belt. So we are going to get incredible reads. I don't know if I can get a better view, but I mean, literally, trust me, this thing is dead smack on top of the center of that belt. Babe! What? You having fun with those walkie-talkies? Roger that. <laughs> Amy just picked up some walkie-talkies. We've been freaking literally two-way and back and forth. Abel, he's out there looking for treasure. <laughs> Anyways, babe, thanks for picking me up those freaking uh, wire covers, uh -huh. sheaves, whatever you want to call them, looms, the deal. Right here they are. Freaking, she got me a bunch of different ones. I can put uh, whatever wire, maybe a different color or whatever. Yeah, this one here though, the braided wire loom, Oh, dude, it's so nice. I like these. A little more expensive, but dude, look at these things. So incredible. Oh, if this thing will focus. Gosh. But anyways, this is the Razorback wire, and uh, you can see right here, I'm feeding it into this freaking braided line saver. Whatever. I don't know what you would call it. they got a million names. Whatever. It is what it is. But hey, thanks for picking these up for me. Appreciate it. But uh, yeah, these are awesome. So this is just going to kind of help make sure I don't have any extra interference, at least in my mind, hopefully. Might not do anything, I don't know. But it's cool, and uh, I dig it. I got the uh, roll pods out of the packages. These are those auto meter freaking uh, roll pod kits so you can get for roll cages and whatnot. You have to order two kits to make this work on a 1.75 inch roll cage. You're literally gonna need kit 48003 just to get the pod okay and that's this pod because it's smaller and it actually fits around the Razorback temp gauge the one uh, maybe I threw it in here hold on the other auto meter kit you need to get is number 48007 and out of this kit you're going to use the mount for the 1.75 inch roll cage as this pod is too big for the Razorback temp gauge so it's unfortunate you got to buy two kits to get this done but if this is the look you want and you don't have another place to really put that in a good spot on your dash or something then I mean this is the route to go I I love it it's it's you guys seen it in the videos on the turbo s I mean literally it hangs right there it's perfect I love it it looks good and that's what I'm going with so that's why I ordered those two and right now what I'm doing is I'm making the mount for both cables this cap that comes on the back of the roll pod and the auto meter roll pod has this cutout in it right here just this side I put this in there and I can prove that to you right here this is what it looks like 
So this is going to have the one cut in there. You need the other hole here for the other wire. So basically what I just do, I grab this taper bit. I didn't measure it out crazy. I didn't do anything nuts. I just got a good idea of where that was and literally just went down in there and drilled a hole. And uh, worked out perfect. It's perfectly lined up. I'm sure when I put the wire in there, it's going to line up perfect. But you only need to make that hole just big enough for this wire to go inside. So you see that just clears it. So I'll be able to pop this off, run that down the wire, screw this thing on, and then I'll be able to push the cap right back on, close it up. Nice clean finish. Looks really good professional. All right, guys, so I got the freaking wire running down this tunnel. I got it going up to the top and I brought this out there's this there's this cutout right here where a lot of wire let me get the zip tie out of my mouth so there's a cutout right here where I brought a lot of wires up I should probably grab a flashlight for you guys so you can see a little better so there's that cutout where a lot of wires are coming up from down below um, instead of coming this direction I brought the wire up but I came up over here so you can see the wire right here. I'm just coming up right over the subwoofer right here. Now what I'm gonna use is this channel that's already in here. So there's a couple channels right here. You don't wanna go in this top one because those pop rivets are gonna to need to go inside there. But this channel right here is left wide open. So I took a drill bit and you'll see right there. I drilled a hole right there. I drilled another hole right there. I drilled a hole right there, I drilled another hole right there, and that's gonna allow me to loop this wire up. It's a little longer than what I need. So whenever I get that attached to the actual gauge, I'll be able to pull this back and leave all the excess hovering over here above the subwoofer. So I will bring this in here. I got these little tiny zip ties right here. And basically, I'm just gonna run those through the hole and zip tie that wire inside that channel so it's nice, it's tucked out of the way, it's not getting in the way of anything else and uh, looks really clean and good. So then I'll bring it up over here, it'll come up out of this boot and then plug in to the back of the Razorback gauge right here. So I'm going to finish running that, getting that all good looking and uh, I'll be back in a second. What are you doing? What? What are you doing? Um, Woo! Look at these guys chilling. All right, Amy's over there making a hangout spot. Got new couch, some furniture. These guys are chilling, relaxing. I'm over here sweating and grinding. But just wanted to show you guys again, real quick. I ended up cutting that zip tie because I had it on too tight. But uh, this was what I was trying to get get across to you. So I got the wire here that's gonna go into the freaking gauge. But once I get that tight, then I'll be able to pull this, the length. The extra out of this move it do whatever I need to do and then freaking put this in pull all that excess and let it hover over there maybe you got it the first time but just wanted to show you again I got all those zip ties just loosely in there until I get that freaking finalized all right so I got the wires coming up um, luckily for me kind of maybe I don't know if I'll keep it this way or not um, I brought the wires up in this gap because the roll cage is 1.75 inch and uh, this boot was obviously made for the OEM cage which was 2 inches so I have a little bit of play from this boot. Um, I was going to cut maybe two holes here or maybe here or one there and bring the two wires up and, and wire them together and then come into this but I seen this gap and I said you know what I'm just going to feed these through there to see what it looks like for shits and giggles. Um, may or may not keep this just all depends in the end and how it looks. If it looks kind of jaked up I'll probably freaking swap it out but um, for right now I got the leads into the back of the gauge I got them screwed down tight and when you put those wires in make sure that you run the one through the hole so that you can get this cap back on but um, as you can see we're gonna take this cap we got the hole here that I drilled looks really good and this is gonna snap in place like this if I can do this one-handed we'll see probably not yeah, I can. Okay. So I got that in there. And you guys can tell. I mean, that looks really, really good. Looks like it's coming out of there. Perfect angle. It just, it looks flush. I mean, it looks nice. It looks stock. 
So that's what we're going for. Nice clean looks on everything. Um, but that's basically it for now. It looks good. It's hanging there. You're sitting there in the driver's seat. You can see that thing perfectly. And I'll still adjust this a little bit. Get that angle right. But yeah, for right now, that's going to work. And then the other lead coming out of the gauge is going to have basically the power and then those two wire or that one wire that's going to go down to the switch so you can change the illumination on the gauge. Uh, this blue wire, I'm going to coil up, zip tie it together, leave it to the side because I, I won't be running a fan in the clutches, so I'm probably not going to use that. Well, I know I'm not going to use that, so I'm just going to kind of just tuck that out of the way. But I'm going to get these wires down there, get everything looking good, tie everything in, and once I do that, I'll show you this thing operating and uh, show you the dimmer on 3.1. And uh, I think that'll be it. I got my wire ran through. I just basically attached this set of cabling to that cable that it ran inside that channel. Got it all over here above the subwoofer area. Now we have this black wire. This is going to go to our power and ground. Um, I'm not going to use the XTC power supply controller on this device because the Razorback switch is just for the dimmable so I don't want to plug that into that and have power going to this um, that's really not going to work for what we need this thing to do so I am going to actually hook up power to the bus bar traditionally and then I'm going to run this gray wire here down to the dimmable switch and that's how we'll get our dimmer working so um, I'll end up just putting this switch in one of the extra outlets on the dash and uh, no big deal so that'll free up one more spot on the XTC power controller so um, just a little different but not that big a deal anyways um, you could run regular ends on these wires and run these into your power and ground but um, I like using those bus bar terminals it makes it really nice super clean look and uh, it's really not that hard to do so I ordered a bunch of these things on eBay you guys seen in the uh, Pro XP accessory video. I had a whole bag of these things, pretty inexpensive, and they're really not that big a deal. And I will go through the process of getting this installed on this cable so you guys know if you want to, you know, go that route or maybe do this on another accessory you got or whatever. So um, I'm going to set the camera up on the dash here, try to get it pointing in the direction where I can kind of work freely with this. And uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Here we go. So you want to cut the ends of your wire about this long. Once you dump your packet out, you're going to have a couple of these weatherproof pieces. You're going to want to install the flat side right here onto your wiring. So go ahead and put one on your positive. And you can take another one, put that on your ground side. And you're basically going to have it looking just like that. So another thing you want to have get one of these tools, one of these crimpers. Um, pretty inexpensive. I got this for uh, maybe around 20, 24, 25 bucks, something like that. Um, if you don't have one of these, you can do it with pliers. Um, needle nose pliers, you can do it and still make this look pretty good. But I'll tell you what, this really comes in handy and makes your crimps look really good. And you can guarantee it's not gonna come apart. But uh, like I said, if you don't have it, you can still get this done. But you're gonna have this end right here. The camera will focus. Maybe, maybe not. All right, so you're gonna take this piece here. The camera focuses, okay, there we go. So take this piece here, and this is one of the ends that we're gonna put on the wire. So we're gonna use two of these, one on the positive side, one on the negative side. Now we are gonna actually attach this positive wire into the accessory line on that plug so that when we kill the key, we're gonna kill the power to this thing and uh, not get a slow drain if that uh, gauge is still on or, or what have you. But anyways, what you wanna do is, you're gonna wanna put this weather pack right at the end of the insulation right there and you're gonna take the very back end of this and you're gonna cup that insulation right there. And then that wire is gonna sit right inside that groove. So you're gonna look at, it's gonna look just like this. This is what you're looking for. So you got that setting in there. You can go ahead and take that crimp tool. Okay, and this is gonna crimp this thing down, make it look really good. Now, just place that in there. And make sure you got the right side going on. And then go ahead, apply your pressure, 
and crimp that bad boy down just like so and you can see how nice that looks I mean that's crimped perfectly it's folded both ends over both of those tabs and that thing is locked in there and then you can use the back side which is uh, the bigger section which is not which is letter B on this thing and you can go ahead and crimp around this weather packed area and that's gonna give you a nice crimp around that put that in there crimp this bad boy down and then that's gonna crimp Oh, come on focus okay we got we got the focus pretty much oh my gosh I gotta leave my hand in here or something I don't know alright so you can tell right there it's crimped nice and beautiful right around that waterproof pack and uh, looks really good this thing is snug I'm telling you it's going nowhere now that you got those two connectors done now you're gonna insert that thing into the clip what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take this end okay and you're gonna take this tab end where it's got this little piece kinda sticking out right there that's always gonna face your locking tab so if that makes it easier to remember um, and basically all you're gonna do is put that thing in there nice and easy until you hear it click okay I hope you guys heard that that clicked in there locked in there and you're basically gonna be left with that so that's exactly what you're looking for and we can slide that right into the um, bus bar harness and boom there we go but before you do that make sure you put this locking tab on and this is going to basically keep um, the wires in there nice and snug and tight and uh, all you got to do is put those wires in between that guy right there and then you're just going to slide this thing you see that you got those wires in between this channel in these two spots and then you're gonna lock this thing down boom now you're good to go this thing's solid you just made yourself a Polaris bus bar and easy so simple hopefully that all came across okay on camera now what you're gonna want to do is however you decide you're gonna route this thing you're basically gonna pop off one of these tabs we'll say we'll pop this one off right here take that out and then we can go ahead and click this in. Now I'm not going to do it yet because I'm going to route these wires uh, a certain way and get them all zip tied down and, and looking good. But that's it. I got that gray wire down in there. I brought it down and I have it. I just reached my hand up in here, back behind there. I brought it out where I want to actually put the switch. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to set this down for a second. I can angle it so you can see, guys. But I'm going to go ahead. Got that switch right here does not matter guys which one of these you put on these connections okay you can put it this way you can flip it and put it this way doesn't matter you're not gonna mess anything up just go ahead get that attached I'm gonna do them both at the same time because my leads are the same length it's gonna make it a lot easier right there got that thing in there I'm gonna go ahead reach up under here draw my wire back and I'll bring that up back up top and we'll wrap that back around those other wires and we'll get that thing freaking strapped down permanently got the switch going in there I'm just gonna push it in until it clicks there we go got it in there looking good we're gonna go back up top here we're gonna pull back that extra line we had in there so got that snug don't pull too tight now what I'm going to do is I'm going to coil this around here. I'm going to freaking attach this to this and just let this sit right here. If we did our job correctly and got all of our freaking wires where they needed to be, I should be able to turn this key over and this thing should light up, okay? And then hopefully after that, the dimmer is going to work. So here we go. We're going to turn the key. Oh yeah, that's exactly what we wanted to see right there. And uh, well, it's about 75, so that is exactly right on. So I'm glad that thing's reading, looking good. Now, we should be able to go over here. We got our dimmer switch right here, and we should be able to, yep, you can see that dimming. So that's awesome. Everything is working as it's supposed to. So super excited, 
I'm really glad that's working. Um, if you wanted to double check and make sure it's working exactly, you could start the engine and uh, let that thing run around a little bit, which we could do. Why not, right? <laughs> That's what we're looking for so super sweet that thing is working as advertised I'm gonna know what my belt temps are when I'm out on the trail when I'm out ripping doing what we're doing and if you guys want to know you know what you need to do just get online look these guys up Razorback I will put the link in description below so you guys can check them out um, but yeah that's it super awesome it's worth the money the install is not that bad you guys literally just stood here and literally watched it from unboxing it to installing i mean the, the entire thing so um hopefully you guys liked this video i really hope you did i enjoyed making it um and i enjoyed getting this much closer to getting this build done that's super super exciting for me i love it man this has just been incredible like the video give this thing a, a super thumbs up and uh subscribe if you haven't and uh, if you haven't, just do it. Why haven't you done it yet? Come on, we're bringing videos all the time, um, as often as we possibly can. Hopefully they're super exciting, you guys are enjoying them. So if they are, and you think so, hit the subscribe button right now. And share it with your friends, which would be awesome as well. And uh, stay tuned, because there's gonna be more videos coming up. So all right guys, we'll see you on the next one.